British scientists received approval last month to create babies using DNA from three people. It's the first time such approval has been granted. Proponents say the technique could prevent women from passing on potentially fatal genetic diseases to their children. To explore the bioethical and Catholic concerns this technique presents, we are joined now by an expert panel. Dr. David Prentice is Vice President and Research Director of the Charlotte Lozier Institute. Arena Grosu is the Director of the Center for Human Dignity at the Family Research Council. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Prentice, can you explain what this procedure is exactly? What is meant by a three-parent baby? Right, and, and let's start with why does somebody want to do this? Hmm. Within all of our cells, there are these little energy factories called mitochondria, and they have their own DNA. And like any DNA, it can be mutated. Mutated DNA in mitochondria can actually lead to some severe, even life-threatening mm. diseases. But what the proponents of this technique have decided to do is rather than focus on people who have those genetic problems, is to create new people hmm. and using DNA from now three different individuals. Importantly, you inherit that mitochondrial DNA from your mom through the mm -hmm. egg. And so one way that they have used to make these three parent embryos is to take the nuclear DNA from mom number one, we'll call her, mm -hmm. and put it into an egg from mom number two that has unmutated DNA and then fertilize. Mm -hmm. Another way is they actually will create two separate embryos, one which has mutated and one unmutated DNA. They kill both embryos and then they mix the parts together to make a third recombined embryo. In every case you're involving creating and destroying human life in the laboratory. Arena proponents say though this procedure is meant to prevent future potentially fatal diseases from passing on to children. Isn't that a good goal? Treating disease and preventing disease is a good goal but as uh, Dr. Prentice also said, this isn't about uh, treating or preventing mitochondrial disease. It's about creating new human beings who are then destroyed for the purpose of science. And so the baby becomes the experiment, hmm. and uh, there are it doesn't actually treat or prevent in existing individuals. This is just a science experiment on new individuals. So humans with those diseases, not, they're not impacted by this at all? They really don't count. And, and if we think about that, the attitude that's being expressed here is that we don't care about those individuals that have that disease. We want to replace them with better people. Is this procedure even safe? What do we know about the long-term health of these babies? Well, Catherine, uh, anytime you manipulate a human being in the laboratory, it's not safe mm. for that human being. Mm. And we've already noted how the technique itself destroys a number of embryos. Mm -hmm. As far as long term, we don't know. Even mm -hmm. the animal experiments are equivocal. And as far as the human three parent babies, there's one, and the report just came out at the beginning of April. The baby is only seven months old. As of that report, they had done one DNA test two days after he was born. And it showed mm -hmm. that the lessening of the mutation probably didn't work as well as they had predicted or hoped that it would, but long term we don't know what's going to happen to this little one and they're going to have to follow him for the rest of his life and his children because we don't know what will happen to them. And generation after generation. Right. Arena, can you explain the Catholic Church's stance on this issue? Yes, the, the Catholic Church, there's a lot of reasons why the Catholic Church is against three parent embryo techniques and uh, first and foremost it involves cloning, hmm. the killing and destroying of embryos and uh, messing with the marital union because babies should be created uh, in the marital union and, and this takes away the procreative and the unitive aspects. And also it really separates the familial aspect. It, you're introducing two mothers, two genetic uh, materials from mothers and, and a father. And so it's, it's very problematic. Uh, the church has spoken against abortion, cloning, and in vitro technologies. And the three parent embryos actually utilize all of these. Violate all of those and don't provide that family environment for a, a child to be born into. Are there any alternative procedures that are moral? 
Well, there actually are if you focus back on those individuals who already have these particular diseases. There are at least hints in the laboratory in animal experiments not yet ready for the clinic that there are certain drugs mm -hmm. that might alleviate some of the symptoms and problems that you get. And in fact, even the idea of using adult stem cells to bring new healthy mitochondria mm -hmm into the tissues and organs of these affected individuals. But again, uh, that's not what these folks are focused on. Right. They're focused on creating new individuals with three parents' DNA that they hope will not have the disease. And then destroying other individuals. Uh, Arena, we're talking about this procedure which is controversial, but in the end, a life is created. A baby is born. Shouldn't we celebrate all life? Well, once a, a life, a new life is created, we respect and value the dignity of that human person, but the ends don't justify the means. And so we don't want to perpetuate techniques that are immoral and that destroy human lives. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, who was killed, mm -hmm. who was exploited, who was commodified, who was cloned in the process of creating this one child that is before you? And so we need to look at all of those questions because the ends don't justify the means. And I know that this paves the way for many future potential problems. This will be something that we'll continue to monitor. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you.